Christ. I muttered to myself as the first flakes of snow started to fall. They gathered in fuzzy clumps over the windshield before my wipers could clear them away. I have been waiting for 15, no, 20 minutes now, in my sister's driveway. Had I chosen to wait inside with her, I'd have been dead by now thanks to those two grey cats, cute little devils, but murdered by my sinuses. Puffy eyes and a clogged up throat, that's just what I needed. Every Christmas, our family made the annual trip to my grandparents' cabin tucked away in the woods of Hope, Alaska, and I hope it to beat the heavy snowfall that was forecasted. Since my sister's license was suspended for a DUI, here I was, a hostage to time, with my fingers tapping anxiously on the steering wheel. When my mother had asked me to be the one to grab my sister, I honestly dreaded it from the start. It wasn't that we hated one another, we just weren't close anymore. After decades of constant arguments and bitter disagreements, we became distant and our relationship fizzed. Yes, we were siblings, but it felt more accurate to call us the residue of what siblings once were. Finally, like the gates of Van Hala, her front door opened and out she came. Her hair was forest green. The last time I'd seen her, it had been white. The time before that, it was violet. Got everything? I asked. As she climbed her way into the passenger seat. Hmm. She responded. As she adjusted her glasses and stuffed a few bags in the back seat. And just like that, we were off. Hope was about a 30 minute drive and it didn't take long for the awkward silence to inflate between us. It then helped that the radio didn't work in my car and that the broken axillary port made your music sound like it was having a seizure. By the time we reached the turn off from Hope Highway, the road was turning into a thick white sheet. Thankfully, on Christmas Eve night, the long stretch of Hope's small community was quick and vacant. The cabin was tucked away in the forest of trees five miles off the main road. As I made the turn, my sister cracked the window, pulling out a blunt and lit it with her lighter. Wanna hit? She asked. Snow crunching beneath us. Not while I'm driving. It's a straight path. You're practically already there. She took a drag and blew it out the window. I want to just focus on this, alright? She huffed it and pushed it up her glasses. If you're that worried, maybe slow down a bit then. There was the jab, a piece of bait to lower me into another fight, but I wasn't gonna bite, not this time. She could live with us getting there faster. The drive was almost over and soon I'd be in a warm living room with my feet up, a spiked eggnog in my hand, and Bobby Helm's jingle bell rock in the air. I could already hear Uncle Jed spouting off one of his crude jokes. Why does Santa Claus have such a big... Dude! My sister shrieked, jabbing a finger in my side and wrapping my mind back to the windshield. The car had just finished winding around a thick trail. The large body of a reindeer stood in our path, eyes wide open and blank. It didn't move as the high beams found it. Snapping into a panic, I twisted the wheels in a desperate swerve. The car veered greasily to the side in a fine spray of slush. The reindeer, also known as a caribou, remained still even as the bumper soared inches from its nose. We came to a crouching halt off the main path. Jesus, I sighed, blessed with relief. Did we hit it? No, my sister said, leaning out the window to check while exhaling another plum of smoke. 
I wound the steering wheel back around and pressed it on the gas. The wheel shrilled it in place, kicking up globs of sheet, but not moving an inch. Perfect, I moaned, and unfolded myself from the seat to check it out. The two front tires were caked in black slush and practically swallowed any mound of snow. I kicked it, trying to clear off the icy debris from the threads and beneath the wheel well. When that tired me out, I resorted to scraping it off with my fingers. Screw off, Prancer, I heard my sister call towards the dark silhouette of the reindeer. Its antlers like gnarled fingers reaching from the treetops. Then she made a sort of yip, followed by a what the fuck. I stood up from the scrim of snow. The reindeer was now standing tall on both of its hind legs. It looked strange, like a silly creature you see in a kid's book. But out there, in the silence of the woods, it was a creepy image. The way its vague shape stood on just two legs held an almost human-like balance. For whatever reason, I realized it then, it didn't have a tail. Its muscular neck grained to the side and let out an ungulating scream. A miserable squeal of metal grinding against metal. My legs were ice sculptures, cementing me to the spot as the shriek quieted to a succession of wet grunts. The reindeer drop it down to its original posture and stomp it heavily. Puffs of white vapor and strings of, of snot vented from its nostrils. I was no hunter, but it didn't take a lot to tell me when a pissed off animal was about to charge. I leaped for the driver's seat, pulling the door open and slamming it shut just as the muffled thuds of hooves reached me. Andrew scraped the door as its large body practically flew over the patch I had just been standing in. Fast. Very fast. My sister screamed as the large bulk of its frame wound back around and charged again, this time shattering the headlights and submerging us in darkness. Just go already, my sister hollered in my ears. I'm trying, goddammit! I hissed. The wheels continued to spin hopelessly. We were trapped. The creature charged again, this time nailing the window. A cobweb of cracks boomed near my sister's head. I searched for anything, literally anything, that I could use as a weapon. I was never really a gun enthusiast, but at that moment, I'd have shaved my head and joined the Seculiar Monks if it meant having a Glock in my hand ready then and there. After rattling the car once more, the reindeer finally appeared to lose interest and disappear amidst the cluster of trees. Granted some time to breathe and think, we phoned our dad and told him about the situation. He was going to come down in his pickup and get us unstuck and out of this mess. I looked over at my sister, who was taking long and steady breaths between her fingers. Are we alright? I asked. What do you think? She grumbled. I told you to slow down. Another jab, and this time I wasn't going to have it. You want to be useful? I yelled. Get out there and push. No? Then shut the hell up. I don't need it right now. She said nothing else, and neither did I. Returning once again to the pocket of silence that our relationship had succumbed to, the sooner dad's headlights peeked in the distance, the better. Suddenly, she rolled the window down. What are you doing? I asked. Shh. She pursed her lips. Just listen. Humoring her, I waited, and sure enough, the sound reached me too. The quiet voice of a little girl coming from outside. Somebody. It whispered. I'm lost. Please help me. I'm lost. My sister unlocked the door and motioned it to open it. I grabbed her wrist. What are you doing? She snapped. 
There's someone out there. Just wait a second. It's weird, isn't it? The voice continued to whine, choking between sobs and pleading for someone, anyone, to help her. I didn't like the way it sounded. The same lasting drawl between words, the same weeping sound, like someone was hitting a repeat on a speaker. Something wasn't right, and my instincts were hoisting red flags left and right. Then my sister looked at me, her expression wrapped into shock. She flung back, pitting both shoulders against the interior. Things that sounded like words bubbled up, but didn't quite make it out of her throat. I turned and saw what was looking at me. It had the face of a man, surrounded by the molted fur of a caribou's body. The skin was mummified brown color, wound it tightly around its long skull like old crinkled leather. Snowflakes landed upon its wide expressionless eyes and melted into the dark membranes of its pupils. It circled the car, bobbing its antlers and fogging up the windows as it peered inside. My heart shook the walls of my throat. I locked eyes with my sister, unable to say anything behind the sheer disbelief. I should have grabbed my phone, snapped a photo, recorded a video, anything, but my thoughts were jagged. It then let out the same horrible scream, but I didn't see its tight contorted lips open. The sound was coming from its neck. Small, fleshy orifices flapping open like mouths were converting the high-pitched shrill into the mimic cry of a little girl. Help me. I'm lost. Help me. The headlights glazed the area. My father's pickup came into view, paving its way down the path. The reindeer, or whatever the fuck it was, ran off vanishing once again into the snow-covered thicket. Nobody believed us. Why would they? If anybody had told me that story, I would have assumed they were hop it up on some crazy psychedelic. But the reality of what I saw was cold, and it's something I still to this day can't fully swallow. Instead of sleeping that night, my sister and I did some research and led us to the myth of skinwalkers. Beings of some sort, capable of mimicking voices and disguising themselves as animals to lure people into the woods. After reading other accounts, there wasn't a doubt in my mind what we'd witnessed out there. Every so often, that night, I'd stare out the window and eye the yard, wondering if I'd see the leathery face watching from the tree line. Neither I nor my sister ever made that trip again, much to the frustration of my family. But there was a silver lining. She and I had never been closer. <laughs>